Men, thanks for joining me today as we continue on this journey to become the men that God wants us to be. Um, I trust that that's why you are watching these men-only videos, because you understand that there's a God in heaven who loves you and created you and has a plan and purpose for your life as a man. And, and we should not shy away from, from being a man and being a, uh, a godly masculine man, masculinity as God understands it, as God defines it for us. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians 16 verses 13 through 14 um, tells us to act like men to uh, be men who uh, act in courage and to um, be men full of faith and, and to, to love really well, to love, let all that we do be done in love. And so um, let's continue to strive to become those men, God's men, who love him and love others really well. Today we're going to read um, a, a little bit out of the Exemplary Husband book by Stuart Scott. We're on chapter 12, which is page 157, 157, and it's titled, a, or it starts off with a husband's responsibility, stewardship. Let's, let's dive in. He says, there it is. The title of the sermon is stewardship, and you know instinctively that it is, it is again the time of year when pastors will shear God's sheep. Too many people, the word stewardship is synonymous with the words giving, money, and finances. But from God's perspective, it is much more. There is a definite need for greater understanding of the stewardship principle. The stewardship principle involves one's maturity and character. The presence of it, or the lack of it, has far-reaching effects on every husband's life. One of the chief complaints that I hear from wives in problem marriages is that, is that the husband is not faithful concerning reasonable goals and his God-given responsibilities in their marriage and or in their life in general. Unless we as men learn to become faithful stewards, we will not be able to fulfill our responsibilities as a husband and we will have many sins and failures with which to reckon. Good stewardship is a, necess is a necessary path toward usefulness to God and his kingdom. A working definition. Stewardship and steward are not commonly used, steward, used words today. A steward is defined in the Webster Dictionary as a person who manages or attains to another's property or financial affairs. In the Bible, the Greek word for steward is... Uh, okonomos, meaning a house distributor, an overseer, a manager, or an employee or agent in that capacity. Being a steward is actually being a servant to someone else and someone else's interests. Herein lies our biggest problem as men and women of this age. Pride and selfishness often stand in the way of being concerned with someone else's interests and stand in the way of recognizing that what I have is not mine. We tend to have a very strong and wrong sense of ownership about those things that have been merely entrusted to us. When we think of the gifts God has given us, including our wives, as our own and for our own benefit, we may wrongly conclude that we can decide what our responsibility is or is not concerning them. We may think that we have the right to do with these gifts as we please. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 24, 1, The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. In actuality, God has made it very clear that no one has, it, that no one has anything unless he has given it or allows it. The 1 Corinthians 4, 7. God owns all things and has control over all things, as it says in Colossians 1, 16. Because he has authority over them, he can require faithfulness. God says that every steward should be faithful in the handling of what he has been given. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. 
faithfulness will be rewarded. There are many natural rewards to faithfulness. For example, living with your wife in an understanding way will naturally result in a better relationship with her than if you live with her in a harsh or inconsiderate way. Also, God says that he will personally reward faithfulness when we reach heaven. The rewards we receive will be determined by our level of faithfulness to his commands. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 14, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be re revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work with which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. With all these things in mind, we can define biblical stewardship in this way. So this is the definition Stuart Scott gives for biblical stewardship. He says this, Managing, maintaining, and making the most of all God has entrusted to us for the furtherance of his interests as we look forward to future reward. What has God entrusted you? God has graciously given you many things. He desires that you enjoy these things and be blessed by them, according to 1 Timothy 6.17. However, along with each thing God has given, he requires faithfulness according to his standards and not man's. Your faithfulness is based on your obedience to God's word, based on 1 Samuel 15.22. In all of the areas in which God has blessed you, he has also given you clear instructions to follow. What has God entrusted to you? You are a steward of, and he's going to give us a list here, okay? So you're a steward of your wife, but they are God's on loan. You are a steward of your children, but they are God's on loan. You are a steward of your brothers and sisters in Christ, your fellow Christians, but they are God's on loan. You are a steward of your money, but they are your God's on loan. You are a steward of your possession, your possessions, those, that, those things that you possess, but they are God's on loan. You are a steward of your time, but your time is God's on loan. You are a steward of your talents and abilities, but they are God's on loan. You are a steward of your physical body, but your physical body is God's on loan. You are a steward of your spiritual gifts, but they are God's on loan. And you are a steward of your ministry, and even your ministry is God's on loan. God's word has made it clear that you are merely a steward of these things. Yes, he has given you these things to enjoy, but only as you use them to accomplish his purposes. The things he has given to us are primarily for God's glory and the good of others, not self. A selfish focus will always result in a lack of faithfulness. How do you view the things God has given you? We must take our responsibility concerning all of God's gifts very seriously. Let's look at how seriously God takes our faithfulness in just one of these areas. God has given us our families. With, the, with this gift comes many responsibilities. The responsibility to provide for your family is just one of those responsibilities. What does God say about the one who is lazy and or irresponsible and does not work hard in order to provide for his family? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5.8, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Every command that God has given concerning the gifts that he has entrusted to us is a serious matter. Some men will, have very will be very disappointed at the end of his life when most of what they have lived for will be burned up. All that will remain are those things that have been done for Christ. One day we will all give an account concerning our lives and our faithfulness. The Bible says in Romans 14, 12, So then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Guys, that's, uh, that's all we're going to uh, bite off for today. Um, that's, I think that's plenty for us to chew on. Um, what has God entrusted to you to steward for him? Um, he Clearly, he expects us to be good stewards of what he's given us. We're supposed to use what he's given to us for his purposes 
And yes, we can enjoy them. We should enjoy it along the way. But we enjoy it the best when we're using it the way that God wants us to use it for his glory, the good of our family, the good of our church family, the good of our community. And so let's make sure, um, you know, I need help in, in, in being a good steward. So I'm going to ask God right now to help make me into a good steward. Give me his eyes, give me his ears, and give me a heart to understand to be the steward that he wants me to be. Would you join me? Father, I pray that you would make me into a good steward of what you've given to me. You have given me much. You've given me an amazing wife. You've given me two strapping young men uh, that I call sons, that, that are my sons, but they're on loan from you. Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for the possessions that you've given to me. Lord, truly, I'm a blessed man. Would you help me to be a steward of what you've given to me? God, I want to be a good steward, so please make me. Please give me your eyes to see. Please give me ears to hear and give me a heart to understand that I might be a good steward of the things that you've given to me. Thank you for your help. Please lead me in that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Men, let's continue to ask God to make us good stewards of what he's given to us. Thanks for joining me today as we continue to become the men that God wants us to be. Have a great rest of your weekend.